This video is going to serve as a guide to prepare you for your Empire War remake experience. What's good, YouTube? It's Jay here, and today we're going to take a brief look at the instruction manuals and all the new things that have been added to Empire War Remake. The mod is now out at, a, at the time of making this video. Um, before we get into this video, I want to just give a quick shout out to the Empire War Remake team for all the hard work that they put in from all the new space maps and combat and models to all the new graphics and all the other crazy shenanigans that have been implemented into the mod. You guys absolutely killed this release and um, I look forward to playing it. This also, this video that you're watching also will be the beginning of our full actual 110 planet Empire playthrough. I think that's how many planets are here. Um, I don't really know off the top of my head, uh, but yeah. That's what we're going to be doing right here. But before we get into this, like I said, we're going to take a look at some of the instructions and stuff. Uh, one of the first things you're going to do is before you even start playing the mod is go to your video settings and disable hardware mouse. Um, there's a video on X2's channel that I'll link in the description below that explains it a little bit better uh, as to why this needs to be disabled. But basically, uh, this game is old and it doesn't emulate your mouse correctly. I, I don't really know the full reason behind it, but disable hardware mouse and it'll help improve your performance overall. Um, absolutely do that. I also, admit, I also saw that somebody mentioned turning off heat distortion also helps with performance as well. I'm going to give it a try throughout this playthrough. I don't know what kind of visual effects that I'll have on the mod. Um, but disable these two things and you should see an improvement in performance. It varies from person to person. Um, so don't take my word that it'll actually 110% uh, fix your issues for you. Um, but yeah, let's take a quick look at some of the instructions and stuff because there's a lot you got to go over. All right, so uh, we're going to start with the minor factions. Um, I'm not going to really, <laughs> I'm going to briefly go over this basically, but we're just going to cover a variety of different things. Uh, there are, there's also some pretty funny lore here. Uh, greetings commander, I'm L3G10N, military liaison, droid of the New Order Droids company sent to aid you to the best of my programming. I'm programming to interface with command systems, strategize counters, predict enemy movements, and act as you would in the case you were unable to perform your duties for now, commander. Here, your, here are your important communications from His Majesty Emperor Palpatine. Also guys. There's a bit of a there's a bit of a grammar issue right now, and one of these sentences are predicted counters or strategized counters predicted enemy movements. You gotta fix that. But um, minor factions We've got the Imperial Defectors, which um, I'll leave these descriptions up here so you can kind of read them yourself. But they're just a sub faction of Imperials that have defected from the Empire. Separatist holdout factions, remnants of the old CIS or the Confederacy of Independent Systems, Republic hardliners or Republic loyalists, so to speak, leftovers of the Galactic Republic that refuse to sign with the New Order. The corporate sector authority, often considered worse than the Empire, just a bunch of greedy psychopaths that live in the upper corner of the galaxy because they're fucking nuts. Uh, the Hut Empire, the Huts, the Sith cultists. <laughs> uh, basically, this is the only faction that you can realistically look at as like a part of just a sandbox. The overall experience for fun. Obviously, the Sith are no more at this point in galactic history, um, but just a bunch of Sith lunatics that have access to a bunch of old Republic ships. I um, mean, they've got the Mandalorian protections and the Hapes Consortium. You should know these factions pretty well if you know a little bit about the expanding universe. Uh, we got a few things to go over. We're going to briefly, like I said, glance over all of this stuff. Um, there's a lot. <laughs> It'd be a lot to read. So, yeah, but as far as Galactic Conquest overhauls are concerned, we do have these filter buttons down here, which will help separate different units and stuff because of how big the build bar is. There are a lot of units in the mod and it can get visually confusing sometimes when you see all this stuff on screen. So they've added filter buttons to help you filter out fighters, structures, capital ships, cruisers, frigates, etc. Um, the Galactic Conquest info buttons, which allow you to see spatial levels, building slots, and special information about planets, were moved to the unit filter buttons as well. Uh, we suggest new players to the 4.0 experience start with the smallest Galactic Conquest, which I also recommend. These bigger ones can be very hectic, even for somebody who's been testing them like I have. They could get very hectic. I, I highly recommend you start off with the smaller maps just to get a big feel for everything. Um, uh, I don't know um, what what this is. Thanks, big thanks to MWY for our totally redone Galactic Conquest. Oh, okay. Um, and our new slick UI that should make the Galactic Conquest gameplay more dynamic and interesting than the older versions of the remake. 4.0 is designed to be a comprehensive RTS. If you watched any of my previous videos, you'll understand that there goes a little. There's a lot more thought into the combat, especially ground combat. Um, it's no longer just slam armies into each other. You actually have to think about your unit formations, how you place troops. It's very, very, very complex, to as complex as you can get with Empire War anyway. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous videos, I highly recommend you watch a couple of them to see what the ground combat truly is like before you hop into this and get frustrated like I did in a few videos, um, which, again, I apologize for. <laughs> but, 
yeah it's a very complex system it's not exactly easy it's easier on the smaller maps but when you get to these bigger maps you have so many different maps there are worlds and avenues to approach it can be it can be tough it can be really tough so you know ask questions um look through all the facts that we have available in the remake discord you know ask questions about combat and um you know whatever you want just to try to figure out how to play it really and like i said go check out some of the older videos that i made on this mod as well um if you want to just watch pretty battles we now also have an ai observer mode which i also made a video about basically you could just watch all the ais just go crazy and fight each other uh, depending on what faction you pick you can even watch the battles themselves unfold which i will be making a few videos about i think that'll be really fun um it literally plays the entire game for you basically the large Galactic Conquest maps are very intensive and may take some time to save. Don't worry, your game isn't frozen, even if the wheel comes up. Just wait, so yeah, just, just be patient. The Web Overhaul. In the Web Galactic Conquest map, there are sectors, systems, and planets. Planets are standard worlds, systems are a small group of planets, and moons and sectors are large collections of planets, all under the same control and are the focus of the new Galactic Conquest. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what the I don't actually know what the difference is between the systems. Like, I don't know visually. Okay, so it's just these right here, the system, the Kessel system. The Mon Calamari Sector, the Yavin system, like, there's just small little collections of worlds and whatnot. Um, yeah, so it's just several worlds and moons and stuff in close proximity. This is all, like, multiple planets, multiple star systems. Uh, that's the difference between the two. So, collection of planets, collection of actual legitimate star systems. Sectors of eight building slots for ground buildings and nine slots for space station orbitals uh, are economic powerhouses and have access to unique buildings. Yeah, so these sectors produce you a lot of money. A lot of money. I believe if you capture all seven sectors, you win the game, actually, too. Um, systems have six building slots for ground buildings and seven slots for space stations and more income than most planets. And then planets have four slots and six slots for space stations and or orbital structures. And uh, they have, you know, the the, the, big, the basic income, pretty much. You'll probably find, you'll be, you'll find yourself with more planets than you will with systems and sectors and so forth. Um, so you can specialize your worlds for, you know, econo economy, production, defense. Uh, make sure your border worlds and choke points have sufficient defensive structures and fleet station. There could be a difference between victory and failure, which is a, which is the truth. It's very true. You know, some hyper lanes are wider than others. This indicates their speed. Wider lanes being faster, most major lanes run through the course, such as the Hydean Way. Take this into account when moving units. I did not know this part, actually. Um, the most direct right route might not be the quickest. So the thicker the hyper lane, the faster it is. Okay, I see... So yeah, all these core lanes are are super fast, and then you got these lanes uh, between these little minor worlds here and there. Okay, okay. It'd be cool if you can get like some kind of graphic. Um, I don't know if the remake team is taking any more suggestions right now. With all, with how stressful this release has been, I can't blame them. Um, but it'd be cool if we can get like a little graphic that just says Heidi and Way or something like that. You know, along these lines, that'd just be you know like kind of faded in each like individual spot right here. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know if that's actually doable, but I think that'd be pretty cool. Okay. Um, that's good to know. I didn't know that was a thing. Instead of researching tech levels, you now escalate the war. <laughs> when you gain new access, or you gain access to new tiers of units, your enemies across the galaxy will as well, even minor factions. Yeah, minor factions go crazy when you upgrade them from tech level 1 to 2. They get a lot of hero units. Um, when you start in uh, GC, your initial starting forces are now randomized as well as your enemies. Every Galactic Conquest will be a different experience, which is very cool. When you start at GC, now all your planets will be connected. Many will be threatened by powerful factions from the start. You'll have to choose which to abandon and which to fortify. Which makes sense. Sometimes you just can't defend every planet that you start with. Otherwise, it'd be a little broken. Minor factions are NPC factions with unique units and powerful heroes. They are not as great as the major factions in the long run, but they are very dangerous at the start of your game. Defending and taking territory from them will be much more difficult than your average pirates. Yeah, because all the Republic forces, the CIS, the Imperial Defectors, they all expand. All minor factions still actively expand. Certain worlds are capable of neutrally building faction-specific units. For instance, capturing Munilus will give you access to CSI ships. CIS, not CSI. And Mandalore will give you access to Mandalorian vessels. Galactic Conquest Economy. Sectors and gas giants are the best source of credits. I'm not even kidding. Many buildings, space stations, larger space units now have an upkeep cost, which is subtracted from your income of the planet they are on at the end of each galactic month. Place your fleets accordingly or risk draining the resources of your most profitable worlds. One of the ways I found about or like around this is like I, I destroy the orbit of a planet, you know, I destroy all the orbital structures and then I just leave the units in space above that planet. It's not the most um, strategic thing in the long run because you don't control the planet, but it helps with when you're really in a tight financial situation. It really helps with that, uh, with those heavy income costs. Uh, there are different types of planets and are 
planets of different types and are more efficient at earning credits in certain ways for example urban planets will gain much more credits from tax agencies than they will from mines barren planets will earn more from mines than other worlds different buildings cost more or less to upkeep depending on the planet type military bases at least upkeep on temperate worlds administrative buildings have high upkeep on barren worlds and mines are costly to run on urban i didn't know this okay this, so this is why it's good to read this kind of stuff um most planets will earn very few credits at first you must build economic buildings or planets so pretty much pretty straightforward um so that's good to know actually so administrative uh, buildings on temperate worlds military bases maybe on the barren ones what we'll to figure that out what we'll to figure that out as we go um or urban maybe maybe admin on urban or swap, swap this maybe administrative on temperate bases on urban i, I don't know what we'll to figure that out Maybe there's not a difference between those two for military bases. Um, you need to prioritize your economy or you'll quickly find yourself broke and be set on all sides. Yeah, don't don't focus on just building pretty chips right out the gate. You're going to screw yourself over. When you begin building something, your credits will slowly drain over time. This allows you much more flexibility, but be careful not to build too much at once. Upon reaching zero credits, all building processes stop across the galaxy until you receive more credits. There are icons on the build bar for selling or downgrading certain space stations marked by a red credit symbol. Due to performance for reasons, uh, previous versions of upgraded buildings will remain on the build bar. Simply ignore these. If purchased by accident, they will refund you. Unfortunately, there's really no real way around that. So we still have a few instructions to go over. Uh, we'll briefly go over the space overhauls, but again, there's a lot of information here. Um, so new maps, skyboxes, buildings with props, atmospheric maps, and some rather notable locations like... Oh, I won't say. Space battles, uh, your objective is to defend or destroy your enemies. Uh, stations and units very weak starfighters are not victory relevant so like also that that applies to infantry also but we'll probably see that in the ground overhaul um okay so instead of uh space stations you now build space colonies with three levels level one is your core of your colony uh, level two expands your colony unlocking the ability to support a variety of secondary structures like admin offices shipyards etc and they all attach to the station at once it looks really cool um, level three completes your calling to give your station more high power weaponry and moving the shield generators to a protected location as well as unlocking the ability to build a command relay which can produce fleet commanders and additional heroes uh, shipyards at level two of your calling you can now produce you can now support three tiers of shipyards one two and three. First one is for fighters and corvettes second one is for, for frigates and cruisers depending on the size third is for the big capital ships like the big boys there are also a bunch of uh, secondary building structures that are not attached to your colony, like economic hubs and stuff. So, uh, fighter overhaul. With 3.0, we, sa we sacrifice the starfighter behavior for performance reasons. No longer. With 4.0, <laughs> this is a lot of reading. Proper fighters are back and better than ever. Their behavior is designed to be as intelligent and cinematic as possible while still maintaining good performance. All fighter weapons have been overhauled as well, with many different missile types. There are like 10 different missile types, I think, uh, with specific uses and debuffs against the enemies. These missiles, including ion torpedoes, all fire automatically at appropriate targets to reduce micro. So you don't have to really worry about it. The missiles will shoot at what they're supposed to shoot at. Uh, Garrison Starfighters that used to come for free in ships and stations now have a cost. Uh, <laughs> they have they cost money to replace, basically, upon death. When each individual fighter dies, the cost will be subtracted mid-battle. Some fighters like ties are not very expensive to replace, while others can cause your credits to drain very quickly. It may not always be worth it in the wrong run to engage. When stations with garrisons die... Uh, they will refund you basically all your money, so which is pretty cool because it's not because the, the reason for that is the station no longer exists, so they don't have to replace any of their lost fighters. It's been destroyed. So, in addition to starfighter overhaul, dozens of new ships, heroes, and starfighters have been added, as well as new abilities and uh, changes to old ships. Thanks to Carrick for texturing the new hut fleet, so we can get them in 4.0, which looks absolutely freaking incredible. If you haven't seen my videos on the hut fleets yet with the criminal underworld, please go check them out. And yes, I'm plugging my own channel. This is my own video. Uh, pathfinding has been significantly improved. That is also true. Units do not collide and slam into each other or stop and get stuck all the time anymore. Um, now, this is really going to be key for a lot of people with space battles. This next bit. Remake has a complex system of firing angles, which means that the placement and rotation of your ships can be essential to them performing well in mid-combat or in combat, in battle, whatever. For instance, the ISD-1 in Providence cannot fire all of its main weapon batteries when facing directly at the target. Instead, engage enemies broadside. This can be done by getting your ship in position, pause, right-click the target, and then hitting the stop command button before resuming. Uh, wait, really? Is that how that works? This can be done by getting your ship in position, pausing, right-clicking the target, and then hitting the stop command button before resuming. Huh. 
Interesting. So you right click the target and then you hit the stop command button. Interesting. What I used to do is I just hold right click and then just make the arrow uh, that there's like a little arrow that'll pop up and I just use that to turn the unit. I um I didn't know like that. I didn't I didn't I didn't know that was a thing. Interesting. All right. Ground overhauls. This is the big stuff. Ground combat is back in remake if you didn't know that already. This is the big leagues. So, here we go. We'll jump right into this. The ground overall is designed to create huge and tactically engaging battles reminiscent of the old Battlefront in RTS 4. The frontline maps, the regiment system, all new combat mechanics, and a huge number of different vehicle and infantry classes to choose from all come together to create ground battles like you've never seen before. This is true. <coughs> there is a plethora of new things you got to figure out with the ground combat. It is insane. There's so much to it now. In ground combat, your objective is to destroy or defend all buildings except defensive buildings and turrets such as the turbo laser towers and watchtowers. These could be completely ignored and are not victory relevant. A lot of structures aren't victory relevant. I don't believe power generators are either. Um, as well as the base, the huge planetary shield generator is a primary target to assault or defend in almost any ground evasion. It will take some time to activate, during which bombing runs can be called in. There is now a large variety of different bombing runs depending on which bombers you have in orbit. Each type of bomber has specific types of bombs as well as firing its other weapons. Check out the descriptions for space bomber squadrons for details. So uglies are different, like ugly bombers for example, they're different from skip rays. They have different types of bombs. I will give you this piece of advice. If you have a capital ship in orbit that carries fighters, be on the lookout for what types it carries because even if you have those starfighter bomber squadrons in your uh, ground formation, sometimes the game will still call in what's with the capital ship. So. It's a little tricky. Uh, it's just Empire War things, kind of. You just got to play around with it a little bit. Um, so, when the planetary shield is down, large ships in orbit can obliterate ground forces with massive orbital strikes, decisively ending the enemy or your resistance. And they, these explosions are massive. They're literally tactical nukes. When building up your planets, be sure to place your buildings and ground units well in the ground preview to maximize your defenses. I haven't actually done that yet. Expect to take losses. Seriously. This is not vanilla ground combat. Use common sense tactics and understand with what your units excel at and victory will be yours. Actually, just step away against the water for a second. That's a lot of talking. <clears throat> I apologize if you hear my air filter in the background. I got to maximize my microphone settings to make sure that it's not picked up. But anyway, so yeah, expect to take losses. Ground combat is not as simple as it used to be and it's not easy. Be prepared to take losses. The regiment system. Instead of tediously building individual units, you now build regiments, each of which is a full army made up of various vehicles, transports, and a large number of infantry. There are many different regiments available, each with its own mix of vehicle and infantry classes. There are only three ground unit slots on offense or defense. Many regiments complete complement each other well. Regiments are disbanded after losing two thirds of your vehicles, including transports. Keep your transports away from the heat of battle and play it safe if you cannot afford to lose a regiment. Seriously. So, I'll briefly go over the units. Um, <clears throat> there's still a lot to really read. Um, but basically. The combat is challenging, vehicles need infantry nearby to take fire off of them, and infantry need vehicles for support keeping your infantry in the front line with your vehicles behind is a winning, just winning strategy. Don't send your vehicles ahead, because the AI is dumb and will target the infantry first. Send your infantry in, let them get shot at. There are many different types of weapons for both infantry and vehicles, depending on the type of armor a unit has, a specific weapon can do more or less damage, or be deflected away entirely. Uh, many units have power, powerful abilities, which will auto-fire when appropriate to reduce micro. A large or infantry now enter large formations when grouped and move together instead of clumping up, which is really nice. It'll keep them safe from things like artillery strikes. Vehicle overhaul. There are many different types of vehicles in the ground overhaul, each with its different strengths and weaknesses. Artillery are powerful long range units, but otherwise um, <clears throat> unremarkable when it comes to fighting units close up. They're very easy to get destroyed, um, and they have uh, they require other units to scout ahead of them. The scouts are critical and battle. I need to slow down. Scouts are critical in battle, forging ahead to detect enemy structures and regiments, or serving as a spotter for artillery pieces. They also have access to use some useful abilities. There are a large number of other vehicles, from ta hover tanks to walkers to treaded tanks of all different shapes and sizes. Um, transports are the vehicle that you transports are the vehicle that your infantry deploy from. It can be garrisoned back into. This allows for swift transport of large numbers of infantry to the front line ahead of your vehicles. Transports are otherwise weak and should be protected behind the lines where they can support where they can use support abilities. Some of them have abilities where they drop crates that, you know, boost the fire rate of infantry or tanks. Um, fighters are a whole new beast with fully reworked flight and weapon behavior. This mod has the best locomotion for starfighters and any flying units. It, they they all actually maneuver and twist around and do other things that just 
you know, float in a little circle. They actually do, it, you, you gotta see it for yourself. It's incredible. Especially the LATs and the gunships. This makes them what they were always meant to be. A persistent and powerful threat against ground units capable of harassing the enemy, behind their lines, and be, being the saviors of your troops in trouble. That is, unless the AI have, or the enemy have dedicated anti-air defenses, which are really, really good. They're not 100% accurate all the time either. You know, they, they can miss some shots. Um, so it's not just broken. There are different. There are five main types of infantry, each which of which has a variety of specific classes and ability to use. Standard, specialist, and assault, anti-tank, sergeants. Uh, standard infantry are your frontline fighter, primarily there to keep the enemy busy firing at them, and not your other more valuable troops and vehicles. Specialists can heal your units, reveal positions, or give buffs. Assault specialists can give more power, or can use more powerful blasters, fire mortars, or debuff the enemy. Anti-tank specialists can use weapons capable of stunning vehicles, place mines, or call in. Uh, strikes. Strikes? What the hell does that mean? Wait, really? Sergeants are more important infantry units, which provide powerful morale buffs when alive, but cause the disarray buff upon death. Or debuff upon death. A uh, stunning your infantry units for a time. If you guys watched any videos I made on this mod early, er, in the year, uh, I raised a lot of this ability, but I was just sucking. Keep them at the rear and avoid bail, uh, balling all of your units together. Or risk multiple regiments being picked apart when a sergeant is killed. Yeah, yeah, please do that. Uh, buildings, all ground buildings of independent power generation except the planetary shield generator do not require the main base generator to function. Uh, turbo laser tower, towers outputs will suffer significantly if the main generator is destroyed, which is good to know. Economic buildings are off the battle map and do not need to be defended or destroyed, which is cool. Uh, there are several different types of defensive structures and buildings that can be built to make your world significantly more difficult to take. Turbo laser towers, anti-air towers, and the turrets. On system and sector, special defensive buildings can be built such as fortresses and watchtowers. These provide well entrenched positions for you to break the enemy invasion. Um, instead of having many separate buildings, you now build a modular base with many different sections capable of being attached to its base core, including your production facilities. So planets have even unique specific bases such as the rubble base on Hoth. And that's the ground overhaul. Let's take a brief look at the miscellaneous stuff. Uh, 7,000 voice or audio files have been added by Luke Lasermaster himself, uh, coming from a variety of different games, movies, etc. It sounds really damn incredible. There are now custom loading screens for every single planet, ground, uh, on both space and ground. Shout out to the Discord for all the crazy cool screenshots. Uh, big thanks to Maxim for helping us rework many AI scripts and in battle AI. There are more contributors to the 4.0 update. A complete credits list is available. Uh, descriptions for units and starfighters have all been redone to convey more information. Reading them will give you the powerful tactical advantage of knowing what units are good at and how to use them. Please read! That's the number one weakness of literally any Yu-Gi-Oh player and any Empire War player. We don't read. Auto-resolve will most likely not go your way. Every time I auto-resolve, things always go my way. The pause button is your friend. Some units do not show up in the loss of screen for reasons. Um... Selecting a unit and hitting C will make it focus. Will make it the focus of the battle cam. You can rotate around the unit. It's an old thing. Check the key the key binds and the uh, options of this game. It'll tell you what the key binds all do. Uh, people often do not know about the ability to rotate the camera. However, uh, you wish in Empire War. Simply hold Control and the middle mouse button, and you too can get glorious close-up shots of hangar interiors, turbo lasers firing, and ships exploding. Please do this. It makes the game visually incredible. More content is coming, future updates should be more frequent since with 4.0, we now have the sandbox framework in place expand to all sorts of new ideas and possibilities. We hope you enjoy us, or hope we hope you will join us on the journey. The following pop-ups give will give you more comprehensive information on ground overhaul, as well as which the factions and minor factions are blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is just telling you what to do. And here's the welcome guide. Welcome to the fucking mod. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for everything, everybody. Um, going forward, we're going to continue our Criminal Underworld Let's Play. We might try it on this new version, meaning we'll have to start over again. But I'll try to get us back up to speed as soon as possible. Or I'll just play it out. We'll see. Uh, we're also going to be starting an Imperial playthrough, first and foremost. Um, to just check out some of the cool Imperial units, get closer to some of these Republic worlds, and get some of the Republic gunships and stuff. I don't know if you can build them or not. I think you can. I'll have to find out. But other than that, we're all set here, everybody. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully this gave you a little bit of information. As I continue to make videos on this, we'll discuss and figure out what things work best. Um, I guess I forgot to mention also, be on the lookout for certain worlds, these certain symbols above them. You can build specific units at these worlds, like Imperial units and whatnot. Be on the lookout for that. Um, but other than that, 
I think that's pretty much it. Again, thank you for watching. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Shout out to the remake team for their incredible work with this phenomenal mod. And as always, everybody, I will see you in the next video. May the force be with you all. Peace.